For this Top 5 Guns of SHOT Show 2024, we're going to do the Top 5 Pistol Caliber Carbines. Normally, I do rifles after pistols, but I thought the rifles sucked this year, so I'm putting this off until last. No, I'm not including the goddamn PSA 5.7 thing, even though it was super popular, because I'm willing to bet this is basically just a PSA rock inside a 3D printed chassis, but I could be wrong, and if I am, I will consider a formal apology to you. Also, I'm not including any of the lever guns because this fad's getting super annoying. Brokeback Mountain LARPers having way too much fun at SHOT Show 2024, and it makes me mad to see people having fun doing something that I don't like. If there's one thing that I know about 21st century America, if I don't like something, it's immoral, probably illegal, so lever actions will not be included in this list, and may God have mercy on Arrow and Smith & Wesson's souls. Okay, I'm done bitching for at least 30 seconds. Palmetto State Armory. They made a huge splash at this show. It's difficult to not include them on every top five list I've made so far. There was an awesome selection of retro guns at the show. DPMS with the Kitty Cat, Bushmaster with the retro guns, even High Point with the 995 Classic, but I thought the coolest one was the DOE 9mm Carbine from H&R, owned by PSA. DOE stands for Department of Energy, as these are clones of oddball PDW-type 9mm carbines used by the DOE to protect nuclear sites. According to probable bullshit I found on the internet, during the 1980s, Colt competed against H&K's MP5K to provide 9mm submachine guns to the Department of Energy and somehow won with this weird-looking piece of trash that featured a 7.25 inch barrel, awful black showed handguards and hand stop, a folding front sight with an A1 or A2 style carry handle and rear sight combo. Somehow, a few of these uppers made it into the civilian market but ran a fortune while another company called Limon, Limon Lyman, made reproductions. Now it looks like PSA will be turning these guns out. I hope you guys buy a shitload of them to reward PSA and H&R for basically getting into crush porn fetish levels of retro gun obscurity. I hope they continue on. In fact, tell me in the comments, just in case the guys from PSA see, tell me in the comments what retro gun you want next from PSA. Number four, controversy slot, because you can't put a $3,000 Swiss blowback PCC at number one, but you don't lead in with it either. B&T had the APC 9K SD squared. Not a lot of characters, but a mouthful of syllables. The APC 9, one of my favorite pistol caliber carbines, it won the first U.S. military contract for a submachine gun since the grease gun in World War II. Hate it as much as you want, but this gun is commercially and governmentally successful. The K model designates the short version, which is something like a mere 14 inches with the stock collapsed. You know what else is 14 inches collapsed? seven of these. The SD version is integrally suppressed. It includes barrel porting similar to the MP5 SD, which will slow down supersonic rounds to subsonic speeds, bleed off gases into the suppressor at the same time. This makes it extremely quiet. But if you want it quieter, the last part of the name, squared, gives you a raging clue. You have the option of screwing on another baffle sleeve set on the SD's end cap, doubling your internal diameter and suppression. If you know B&T like I do, you know it's going to be expensive, possibly limited edition. So buckle up and hand your wife the keys to your bank account for a few months if you want to survive this one. Number three, my boy Rich Angstad. He done did it. I brought a couple of Angstad carbines on TFB TV before in the past, but none of them have really done it for me. They've all had their pros and their cons, but in my opinion, none of them was like, wow, you know? Now the Vanquish different story. The Vanquish, we're talking a semi-premium AR9 carbine, Glock mag fed 
with great anodizing, an aero rail system, radiant parts and accessories, B5 furniture, you're starting with basically an already tweaked out Glock Mag AR9. I've already tested this gun out. That video is coming soon. I can tell you these guns work really, really well. But of course, it isn't just an AR9. It's like the unholy union of an MP5 SD and an AR9 in the backseat of Carl Brueger's Bentley. That's because it uses a ported barrel just like the MP5 SD or the APC 9 SD we just talked about, bleeding off gases into an integral suppressor. The integrated suppressor is something else. It's just a big tube with no baffles, making it easy to remove and clean as needed. It screws directly into the receiver so you can go from bigger to smaller, vice versa. The use of a tube instead of a traditional baffle stack probably wouldn't be as quiet, but first I'm guessing, and second, the trade-off is simplicity, ease of use and maintenance, and no chance of a baffle strike. Angstat has the gas port tuned for maximum compatibility and reliability with all types of ammo, so it doesn't quite slow down supersonic ammo to subsonic speeds in all cases, but interestingly enough, the Vanquish comes with screws that allow you to open and close the gas ports and tune them yourself. Pretty brilliant, if you ask me. The gun comes in at 2175. The complete upper comes in at half that. And if you want just the barrel and suppressor combo, you're looking at 650 bucks. Not bad for a premium quality AR9 and the suppressor with it. Number two, finally, a civilian MP7, finally. Tommy Bostic, the owner of Tommy Built, who has Tommy Built, his reputation on manufacturing high-end G36 clones, is behind this one relatedly. I sent an entire G36K parts kit and an SL8 to Tommy. He made a G36K for me that is indistinguishable from the real deal and uses all the same parts. When it comes to HK, this guy knows his stuff. I miss Tommy at the show, but it doesn't matter because he probably wouldn't tell me all these details like where he's getting parts from, which parts he's manufacturing, which parts are HK OEM, but of course I would love to know that. I'd love to know more details on testing, parts interchangeability with the original MP7 and where the magazines are coming from, how much they cost. I have questions is what I'm trying to say, but I miss Tommy. I'm sorry. That's it. Based on my experience with Tommy Bostic, if this guy says he's making an MP7, there's a good chance that it's going to be faithful to the original and it's going to be good quality. It's also going to be expensive as shit. But if you're playing the MP7 game, you ain't sweating the buy-in, buddy. You're just going to put on your Maui gyms, slide into your least S-Class, head down to the local gun store, and put down the deposit with a credit card that your fourth wife doesn't have access to. Whew. Okay, time for my number one. I'm a little nervous about this one, guys. Mainly because of how many of you told me to shove my number one pistol pick, the Beretta 30X, up my ass in the comments to the Top 5 Pistols video. But I'm going to have to go with the Flux Raider 365. Is this a stupid pick? Maybe. Contrary to popular belief, I don't shill, except for Glock, so don't say that. So what is it? If you know the Flux Raider, this is the Flux Raider, but for the Sig P365. If you don't know the Raider, it's a not shitty chassis that allows you to put a Sig P320 fire control unit and slide into a very small and well thought out chassis system that gives you a stock, the ability to keep two magazines on the gun, the ability to mount an optic, and it's super lightweight, super customizable. Now, this is the smallest iteration. The old one's 320, this is 365. It can be appendix carried undetected. You even have the option to install a switchblade style stock that'll automatically deploy when the pistol is drawn from the holster. The version I used had a six inch barrel, which means you get better ballistic performance than the much, much larger MP5K, plus the ability to keep a second magazine in the handy magwell up front, which will deploy both magazines at once whenever you do a mag change, plus you've got better optics mounting solutions than most MP5Ks. Look, you guys all know I'm a big concealed carry guy, an enthusiast, a fancier, if you will. Of all the PCCs on this list, this one's the most appealing to me because it seems like the only PCC that was at SHOT Show I might legitimately 
actually walk around my neighborhood with, especially if I can fit that son of a bitch into a fanny pack like I can with the BNT TP380. Hey, would I rather have an MP5K PDW than this or a Mark 18 in a self-defense situation? Probably. But like my Uncle Clint says, for carrying, none of them are small enough. For fighting, none of them are big enough. I think IWB carrying a PCC with comparable performance to the MP5K makes my pants tight in more ways than one. If you know what I'm saying. Speaking of that, you guys know I love you. Thank you so much for tuning into my personal channel. Still got a couple more SHOT Show wrap-up videos. Then it's back to your regular scheduled programming. Got some really good guns and law videos coming your way. And I think I might be recording a couple of car videos shortly. You know, so that's going to be kind of a weird change of pace for me. Maybe we'll get into fitness this year. Who knows? This is my personal channel. Don't forget to subscribe. Thank you guys.